Hey guys, how's it going? This is Nate English from EnglishEndurance.com and today I'm gonna make a pre-ride video of the San Bruno Hill Climb. I went out there the other day and did a pre-ride video with my friend Ray who's gonna race it this weekend and we had some comments about it but now I wanted to show you like you know minute for minute the whole climb and we're gonna run this at two times speed so that it doesn't take terribly long to watch the whole thing. The real climb will take somewhere around 15 to 25 minutes for most riders. So the hill climb starts at this intersection. You immediately turn left and just a few feet in you're going up a hill and I'm not sure exactly what the grade is here but it's a good like seven or eight percent and it just stays pretty even. I mean, you can see way up the road and a lot of times you feel like you should be going faster because you can see so far up the road, but it just, you know, stretches out there. Don't get lured into going way too hard in the first few minutes because you can easily load up your legs a lot more than you would want to just within that first few minutes. And I know from experience, a lot of people tend to go out a little bit hard that first couple minutes and you kind of have to find a balance. You definitely want to be with a group because it levels off a few times just up ahead and, and it can be great to get a draft if you're riding with other riders and it's awesome to have them to help you pace because if you're like trying to hold on to somebody's wheel a lot of times it's a little bit easier to keep going and a lot of times it is kind of windy out there so even if it's not faster on a flatter portion of the climb you can still get a good bit of wind protection depending on what the conditions are as you can see the first probably over a k here is a pretty steady grade it starts to level off a little bit. It gets down to maybe like 5% for portions here. And you can see up the road, I mean, it kind of meanders to the left right a second ago. It's gonna meander again to the right. You hit this light uh, that you can see in just a moment maybe. And that's probably a quarter of the way up. So at this point, you should definitely see your heart rate climb, you know, close to your threshold level or maybe even getting to what you would regard as your threshold heart rate, but you don't want to see peak heart rate numbers like well above your threshold this early in because you're not even a quarter of the way through the climb yet. And if you see whatever your you know peak 20 minute heart rate is, that can be fine, but you don't want to see the heart rate that you would expect if you were out doing you know three minute intervals or if you were going to do a five minute hill climb or something like that. So you know try not to go too hard, keep it steady through this flat flatter portion of the race right here and then up ahead in a couple spots definitely try to share the work with other riders and don't just sit on the front of whatever group you're in likewise don't try to try, try not to let yourself get gapped off of whatever group you're with right here it kicks up again a little bit it's not steep but it's a pretty steady maybe seven percent grade for a lot of this uh, I'm not sure what the whole climb is like what the average grade of the whole climb is but most of it's somewhere around that six to eight percent range. There's a few spots where it might get close to 10%, but I don't think it ever really gets that steep. Uh, when you factor in a few of the flatter portions, it probably averages like maybe six percent, I would guess. But anyway, you can see in this free ride, like I was going pretty hard. I wasn't going quite all out, but I was keeping a pretty steady pace that would be maybe you know 95% effort just to you know, be efficient while we were filming this. And all of this time that you see me out of the saddle, like I'm not going terribly fast. Obviously the, the video is sped up, but it wasn't that much of a penalty to be standing up and, being, and to be less aerodynamic. Generally, you know, you're a little bit more energy efficient when you're in the saddle, you're a little bit more aerodynamic, but if it's steep enough and you're going slow, standing up can, you know, use different muscles and it can open up your lungs and maybe you can breathe a little more deeply. Personally, I really am the kind of climber who alternates quite a bit and throughout this climb you can see I'm probably out of the saddle maybe 50% of the time. Definitely going hard as you can see. This part is a little bit flatter. Through this left hand sweeper, it then starts to sweep right and you get into the park. So I would say that at this point, I'm pretty close to the halfway point of the climb. So right through here, it starts to level off. You can see I'm going faster. I might even, I might even be in the big ring at this point, I'm not sure. Once you get to this guardrail, it's almost flat. And if you're in a group, like you could definitely ease up. Even when I'm here on my own, I totally just soft pedal to take this turn. And you go right, you go through this gate up ahead, you go right again. Because there's people there, I you know, kind of slow down a little bit, but during the race, you don't probably need to worry about that. I was just checking with Ray at the car for a second. But anyway, it's flat there, it starts to go up a little bit and then going underneath the road that you just came up on. It's a little bit rough pavement there. It's a little bit rough intermittently going through this parking lot. 
Uh, that little sweeping turn is kind of steep, but then it levels off again. I think you'll even see that I might stop pedaling for a brief second because the pavement is rough. Don't worry about that. I mean, just you know, take a deep breath, try to relax. Once you get to this part, it's pretty much uphill all the way and you don't really get much of a break at any point. Well, I mean, you don't get any break really. It just stays uphill the whole rest of the way. It's never flat. It does change grade, so some portions are a little bit steeper than others. Right here, through the trees, it's not as steep. Once you get out of the trees and you kind of get around this bend up ahead, you can see a good portion of the rest of the climb. And at this point, you're two thirds of the way through. So however long you've been out there on the road, you can anticipate going another 50% more. So if it's been 10 minutes, you can expect five minutes longer. If it's been 20 minutes, you can expect another 10 minutes. Um, it's pretty steady up here. Look at the pavement, look up the road, don't just space out. Cause you can find sometimes it's a little bit smoother if you just go a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. Since the upper portion of this climb is usually closed to traffic, you can go ahead and probably, you know, get close to the center line if the pavement is smoother there, like I did through that turn. And I do up ahead a little bit. Since Ray was following me in the car, um, I didn't want to go too far to the left in case there was anybody else on the road. But if I was doing the hill climb, I would just totally go for the shortest line and I would go right up against the yellow line. And then right here, you know, right up against the right side of the road again and just keep going. This portion, it stays uphill pretty solid. You can see that I'm not going as quite as fast here. I'm out of saddle a lot because you know, the last five minutes of the climb is pretty solidly steep. It's, it's pretty fun. I and mean, you pick up a lot of altitude pretty quickly and you get awesome views. It's really nice up there. It is often pretty windy. This is kind of near the ridge of this uh, little mountain area and you often get a lot of winds sweeping over the top there. So pay attention to that. Pay attention to the direction of the wind and try to orchestrate it so that you're not climbing out of the saddle as much when you're going into a headwind because it hurts you more as far as their dynamics are concerned. Going through this left-hander, you're just a couple minutes from the top and it's still a ways to go, but it's, it's definitely getting close to the end. So you kind of need to just dig in, keep going hard, you can see that little box to the right. You know that you're getting close to the end. Um, it's still pretty steep here, but then it gets a little bit shallower after this kind of bend, and it just kind of rolls a little bit to the finish line. You finish near the radio towers. Uh, kind of, there's a couple little parking lots and pull-offs up ahead. The pavement's kind of rough here, so definitely pay attention to where the smooth pavement is. And when you can see the radio towers, like you're definitely getting close there. Um, it's been a few years since I've done this. When we did it, or the, the few times that I've done this, I've done this maybe three or four times over the years, we finished right at the very end where it levels off and it's still up ahead just a little bit. This is a little bit shallower. It definitely can be windy. Through parts of this last bit, I was in the saddle more than I would want to be just because it was a bit of a headwind and I knew that it would be you know, easier and a little bit faster if I was in the saddle. But right here, you're getting near the finish and you kind of get to this flatter portion, you turn, you turn the corner here and that's it. So when you see that radio tower up ahead, you know that you're getting close to the end. 